Okay, so this is the Electrify America site at Burlington Mall, just north of Boston, Massachusetts. So we'll get plugged in and we will talk about the reliability of Electrify America in the middle of 2020. So welcome to another Coffee in Kilowatts. This is number 10 and I'm still failing to bring coffee, uh, although there is a very good uh, cafe just over here called Prest if anyone happens to be in the Burlington, Massachusetts area and in need of a charge. Not today because I need to record this and go and get my family dinner but uh, for now we'll have some cold drinks and talk about Electrify America's reliability in 2020. There we are, tough to see probably, but we are just north of Boston. Station two, you'll find that all the way up on the top. Swipe to start. For anyone who hasn't watched the channel, the app is by far the easier put way to start. Cheaper on the membership plan, cuts out a dollar session fee. Cheaper per minute rate, all good stuff. Here's your zero session fee, 15 cents a minute here in Massachusetts. We're starting at 28%. Same deal. Okay, so let's get in the car and talk about the reliability of Electrify America. And just for the completists, as we start up here at 28%, pushing 53 kilowatts, that should build up to 54, 55. So as a little bit of context, in case you haven't uh, seen some of the other videos, uh, Electrify America started uh, installing stations just over two years ago. The first one was in Chicopee, Massachusetts. That's in the middle of the state here. First place we had uh, managed to charge up to 55 kilowatt maximum rate on the Bolt TV. So it's, uh, it's a relatively new network, even though the name has been familiar for a long time now. Two years is not that long. It's, uh, it's been the fastest growing network, faster growth curve than uh, some of Tesla's supercharger network. So they've done a lot in that two years. They started with only a handful of sites, not even double digits. And now we're up to uh, closing in on 500. I think the last time I checked it was 460. This one opened in the last uh, week or so. So it's taken a little bit of time to get this one in the ground and uh, up and running. The, um, the reason I wanted to jump into this was because I put a question out on a few different social media channels asking what people rated Electrify America. I've had two very different um, experiences over this summer, 2020. The New York Thruway, there are stations constantly offline. There's a patch between Albany and Buffalo of around 300 miles, which was difficult to cross at the start of summer. And as of now, uh, August 2020 is impossible to cross for the moment because the stations in Waterloo and uh, Buffalo have been ripped out of the ground. They're starting again, putting in uh, new units there. So I guess the hardware was certainly to blame there. But it's an open question mark. If you ask what people's experiences are with Electrify America, you will get vastly different responses. And that kind of played out in the uh, very unscientific uh, informal survey that I did across uh, mostly Facebook, uh, some Instagram, and a little bit of Twitter. So let's look at the results. I mean, it's again, take this with a grain of salt, me asking the question, saying, look, I've had some great results on Electrify America and some god awful ones. Where do you stand, you know? So let's dive into those numbers and uh, see what we can take from that. So we did manage to get 40 people to give a uh, rating in some form or another on uh, Electrify America in general, not specifically mentioning reliability, but with the, the undertone of the question being, look, I've seen that it's failed completely on one route. It's uh, been perfect on another for me. I generally give them seven out of 10 for the uh, effort and the where they've got to by today. Um, so other people weighed in. We had um, of the 40 people, five of them rated it between one and three so you can see you know 12 percent thinking that basically it's 
it's just not good enough. We had comments ranging from, you know, I try and avoid them as much as I can to every, you know, road trip I've had with them has been constantly messing around. And most people were able to get a charge, I would say. So I don't know that to me, one kind of implies that you've never been able to get a charge. But, you know, this is, again, not the, not clearly defined. It's just people's initial reaction to how they feel about Electrify America. So five people rating it between one and three, not great, but a very small percentage compared to uh, the people that rated it uh, eight to 10, right at the other end of the spectrum, uh, that was 20. So you're getting a good 50% of the people that answered saying, you know, some 10 out of 10s, some nine out of 10s, but all those people generally having a good experience and only reporting the most minor of issues, maybe having to change station now and again, not being able to start up right away occasional call to customer service, that kind of thing. A good chunk, 50% of people rating it very highly indeed. Um, and then the remainder, the 38%, were in my kind of category of the middle ground, four, five, six, seven. Most of that middle ground was fives and sevens. So in that case, you've got 38% of people basically saying it's okay, but there's a lot of room for improvement. So to me, that kind of just, it just backs up again. This is why you hear so many different opinions on how reliable the network is, because it's, you know, it, it really depends on people's individual experience and area. Just check in here then, 15 minutes in. I'm hoping not to spend more than 30 minutes recording this. So we've got that. We're still at 53. I did see it tick up a little bit to 54 briefly but uh, that will probably be a little higher into the pack. Although well, we're at 50%, so it's not got much room now to get up to the 55 kilowatts. But either way, this is just checking in as we record the second half of the video. So I did also log people's um, you know, rough area, their region and their state for this to try and get an idea of um, you know, where if, if there were going to be real problem areas, maybe some people have a really poor opinion because they're in upstate New York or they're trying to cross that route a lot. Um, but actually, the geography that I kind of recorded didn't get a whole lot out on the negative side. We couldn't really see any trends between, you know, these people are in the northeast and they're having problems. They're in an area where they just don't have enough stations and when they don't get a charge, it's a disaster. The northeast came up as a pain point. It wasn't the, the only you know, area that came up as well. People talked about Arizona, there were problems down in the Florida, Atlanta area. So it's not, it's not unique to any one uh, route. On the positive side, there were mostly um, good reports from the West Coast. So we didn't get very many from um, the Pacific Northwest. Only one person was up there. But um, of the people who rated the uh, Electrify America network nine or 10, 41% of those were in the West, mostly California, you know, a little bit of Arizona. Maybe it's because they have such a density. Maybe they have so many more to choose from that they're doing there. They're able to do their homework ahead of time, look on PlugShare and say, well, of course, I'm going to ignore this charger, this charger and this charger because they have low ratings as you would potentially do in the Northeast here if you had more options. But the point should really be that whilst we're talking about being able to cross the country, you know, then you need to make all of those routes uh, passable. If there's a 300 mile stretch where there should be stations, but they don't work or they've been ripped out of the ground because the equipment needs, you know, significant maintenance, you know, disparity between the claims that the network can go coast to coast. But as I say, we did see, you know, West Coast, specifically California um, folks being a bit more positive. Let's leave some room for uh, optimism, mainly because, you know, as they install more stations, hopefully we get the redundancy to use the stations that uh, are the overflow areas, be able to report, you know, and get better maintenance out to the ones that are troublesome. Um, and it doesn't make any one route so dependent on the stations as we see on the New York Thruway. I keep coming back to that because they say, well, this is my route. This is where I need to pass, you know, um, most of the time on my road trips. And if they don't work, the stations are going to give them problems every time. They're going to lose faith in the network and rate it very low. So all this really comes back to my um, my start of the year video on uh, what I think Electrify America needs to improve for the year, and reliability was one of these um, one of these criteria. I do believe they are trying to work hard on this, and I do 
think they will get there, but the, the speed has come at the expense of uh, maintenance, in my opinion, in some stations. Obviously, I'm not technical or engineering oriented enough to know what's happened on those stations on the New York Thruway and other places that people complain about, but it's it's not going to be acceptable. For and I want to be saying that things are getting, you know, undeniably better, that we're seeing an uptick. Um, and as far as the Pennsylvania route that I talk about goes, you know, you, you could say that's the case. I've had problems along that last year. This year, it's absolutely flawless. I'm hoping that we can say these trouble spots have been clearly identified. They've been, they've learned from the experience. They put in new equipment and that uh, solves the problem. Because if you get that, then they start to have a record of, we see the problem, took us a while to fix it. We've now done it. And that part of the network is, is rock solid. And as you do that, you can fill in those, um, you know, trouble spots as you go and still expand and cover more of the country. They're aiming at 800 active stations by the end of 2021, which isn't as fast a pace as the last year. So hopefully they can divert a little bit more into the area of maintenance. There you go. We got the 30 minutes, the 40%. for just under five bucks. It does say the maximum charge rate got up to almost 56 kilowatts, but that's usually the station reporting a little bit more than the car does. The max we saw here was 54 kilowatts. The max I've ever seen in the bowl touch leap on the power display here is 55 kilowatts. The main thing is, in terms of reliability and the topic of this video, this station was the first one we pulled up to, the first connector we used, and the first we plugged into used uh, no problem at all. So that is how it should be until we get to plug and charge technology that we've discussed and uh, other such things where you can just plug in and let the car figure it all out. What do you consider acceptable reliability on, um, specifically on Electrify America, but for any charge network really? Um, do you see it as you have to be able to just plug in and the first station works with no problems? Do you have more of a, you know, nuanced, it's okay if I have to change connector or maybe just try a different station? Or is it, uh, you know, down to the case that if you can get a charge, it works fine. You're just happy that this is at this early stage with the adoption curve, we can get to a station and find some way to get a charge and get to our next uh, destination. Put your rating out of 10 down below, you know, one to three, my criteria being awful, four to seven, just, you know, you have regular problems and it's not really good enough, just average, but there are some bright spots and uh, eight to 10, you know, pretty much the occasional hitch, but basically you love the network and you're able to get a charge when you need to. Also interested in hearing from uh, Tesla owners. We don't talk a lot about it on this channel because it's, you know, it's not a public network. You can't really use it. And we only have the uh, Tesla Model 3 sporadically. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll do some kind of road trip with uh, that in the future. But um, what do you think about the supercharger network? Have your experiences of it been that it's always uh, up and running, never have a problem. Are there problems we just don't see because Tesla owners out using stuff like PlugShare and other public facing um, apps, what uh, the problems are? are? There things other than the Thanksgiving delays and the general volume of people using it in places like California and the Northeast that uh, we don't see. You know, there are downsides to their network as well. Not that I see, but again, this is all anecdotal. We're just trying to figure out what is the standard we should be aiming for at this stage of EV adoption. So please do weigh in with your opinions. That for now, keep yourself cool and talk to you later.